Hello marketing research students and SPSS users. In this brief tutorial, we'll be running some basic univariate statistical analysis in SPSS. In other words, we'll be taking individual variables and looking at measures of central tendency and dispersion, mean, median, mode, variance, standard deviation, and so on. In this tutorial, we're again using our spring 2014 craft beer 200 random subset data set for practice. And we'll be looking at two variables today. We'll be using the age variable, and we'll be looking at the ethnicity recode variable. Let's keep in mind that our ethnicity recode variable is a nominal variable with a variety of value flags indicating the particular ethnic group or potentially multiple identifications that someone identified themselves as. Whereas for the age variable, let's keep in mind it's a scale variable and for the values that we have coded, we have people from 21 to 23 to 55 and older, values from 1 through 6. In addition, we, have a, we coded people who are under 21 as negative 99. Normally, we you wouldn't see something like this in a marketing research uh, data set, but in our case, we decided ahead of time that we do not want to study people who are under the legal drinking age. So if they identified themselves as being under 21, we decided ahead of time to code them as negative 99. And then in the missing value section, we set flags for negative 99 to also be considered missing values. So it'll skip over these cases when we conduct any analysis. Now to run some basic univariate statistics, you're probably already familiar with where to go. Go to Analyze, Descriptive, Frequencies. I'm going to right click here to display variable name because I know I want my age variable. I'm going to hold Control on the keyboard. That allows me to select multiple categories at once. And I now have grabbed both the age and the ethnicity recode variable. You could also double click each one individually. Under statistics, let's ask, ask for the mean, the median, the mode, the three M's of central tendency, standard deviation, variance, min and max for dispersion, and you could ask for additional uh, values as well. Under charts, let's, let's go ahead and get a chart. We'll ask for a simple bar chart for now. Take a look at the percentages by, expressed by percentage of the total. For format, we'll leave it by default and ignore the bootstrap command. We can hit OK and run our syntax. You should see three tables, two visuals, and at the very, very top, you should see the frequencies command. This is the actual syntax that SPSS ran when we, as we set up with the syntax using the click menu earlier. Let's take a look at our frequency table here. This first table will always have in columns each individual variable that we've ran with our frequencies, and each row will represent the particular pieces, uh, uh, particular statistics that we asked for each variable. <clears throat> when we look at this table, something should pop out at us. The ethnicity variable is clearly a nominal variable. Nominal variables are merely categorical. They're, they're not in any order or ranked order or uh, equal distant order, such as interval data. Because of this, there's a few things that we know in this output that are nonsensical. Average means nothing for a nominal data. Median means nothing for nominal data. Mode means something. It tells us that the value code of 1 was the most common value. Standard deviation and variance doesn't mean anything because those are measures of dispersion, meaning we have to have some sort of rank or some sort of equal distance between each, each value code. And finally, for minimum and maximum, you can make a case that these should stay or should go. If we keep them, the value of 1 and 10 here merely mean this is the lowest value code number and highest value code number that we used for the ethnicity variable. If we get rid of it, we're indicating that really it doesn't express any sort of range of the values for ethnicity. It just happens to be the code values we used. Now for the age variable, being a continuous variable that it is, mean, median, standard deviation, variance, min and max all have some meaning. Given that there's some, some pieces of data here that don't mean anything, we should get rid of them before we report them in any sort of professional publication. Let's double click on these values takes us into an editing panel. You may have had a different window pop up, same, same principle. And by clicking on mean now, we can delete these values. And this cleans up our data set nicely. I'm, I'm sorry, our table nicely. Now that we have a table that actually every value reported actually means something. And click out. Very good. Now let's take a look at our frequency tables. Our frequency tables will always be trying to do us in the following way. For the valid data, we'll have the different potential value codes and the, number, the frequency, the percentage of the total, including missing values, up to 100%. Notice that we have lots of missing value codes here, totaling up to 100%. So 
82.5% of the data is valid, 17.5% of the data is missing, therefore we have 100% of the total. This is only scoring the valid percent, it's ignoring the missing for now. See how these values here now add up to 100%, and this is just expressed in the cumulative percentage. Same exact procedure reported for ethnicity as well. Now looking at this table, a few things should pop out at you. All four of these columns probably aren't what we want to show to a particular respondent. That's a lot of different things. They have to make sense of, do they want to look at the percent column? Do they want to look at the valid percent column or the cumulative percent column? The frequency column definitely means something. It tells us in the original metric, uh, the original count, what the frequency was worth for the different value codes. But we might also want to express in percentage, but we should pick one. So let's go ahead and double click on the age table here. In this particular instance, I have decided that it's very important for us to express to our manager that we do know how many people were under 21 in our data set. Given that we care about the missing data, in this particular instance, I've elected that this, this second column here, this percent column, is very important compared to the valid percent and cumulative percent. Therefore, I want to delete these two. I can click and drag and select all of these and simply hit the delete key. And now I've trimmed my table down nicely. It's a little more understandable for the upcoming, for a manager to interpret these values. In this particular instance, I've already, I've also judged that I think this is equally important for the ethnicity variable where I want my manager to really understand how much missing data we're dealing with in this particular case. So I've chosen instead of the valid percent column or the cumulative percent column, the percent column is serving me best of these three. So I have double clicked on this, selected these other two columns and hit delete. What is my objective here? My objective is the same thing that any analyst should be thinking about. How can we as easily as possible display the complete story of our data? And by deleting two additional columns that didn't really impact any uh, of the entirety of the story of the data, we've simplified the, simplified the ability for someone who's not as familiar with this data to understand the data. Finally, we do in fact have some bar charts that we made. In this case, I might not elect to actually include these particular bar charts in my final output. I've judged that I think the frequency tables do just as good of a job. I'd be willing to hear arguments for either way. However, it's useful for us to take a look at this data, and quickly here we can visualize and see that 21 to 23 year olds make up the overwhelming majority of this particular data set, and individuals who categorize themselves as white, multiple identifications, or Hispanic, Latin American, are by far the three most prominent groups in this particular data set. Given that this was SDSU students who responded mostly to the survey, we are probably not too surprised to see these classifications. Okay, so that's some basic understanding of how we can quickly format the output that comes from running a basic frequency analysis. The general principle here is thinking about only reporting the results that are necessary and accurate to aid in the understanding of those who might be reading or investigating your results.